Hi and welcome. So today I want to share with you more about the role of food in the emotional eating pattern. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm a certified holistic nutritionist and emotional eating expert. And it might seem obvious that food plays a role in the emotional eating pattern. And, you know, usually when I work with clients and even on my own journey, food was sort of this enemy that we were trying to control because it felt like we were out of control around food, that it was the food making us do certain things. And so on the outside, sort of at the outermost level, that's what it looks like. So emotional eating is really when we use food to soothe ourselves from any discomfort, any uncomfortable emotions. But this pattern goes so much deeper than food. And so we might think food is the enemy. And that's where we get caught up in going to different diets, trying to control our calories, our plate size, how we interact with food. We're really trying to control this relationship with food, but it's not at the root of what's really going on. And so through this journey of feeling out of control around food and trying to control it with all of the diets, and whether you've been on a diet or not, our society really is controlled by this diet mentality, by this way of looking at food as calories in equals calories out, and your plate should be this size. And there are all of these rules around food and diet. And we think if only we could just force ourselves to stick to it, we would control our emotional eating. But if we don't understand what emotional eating truly is, we're actually doing ourselves a disservice because we are punishing our relationship with food, and we are also ignoring our relationship to our emotions and even with our body. But today I really want to focus on food. And so when we get into this diet mentality, you know, something that I see with clients is that they're looking for that magic bullet, that perfect diet, that perfect way of eating that's going to help them. And, you know, I don't want to throw let's say the baby out with the bath water, the way we eat and nourish ourselves is so important and it's going to be different for each of us, slightly different. And so what we really want to get to when we're an emotional eater is not to completely throw out food and not be, you know, in touch with food and just you know, just have this control. We want to have a relationship, a healthy relationship with food. And so in a healthy relationship, it doesn't feel obsessive. It doesn't feel compulsive. We don't feel out of control. We don't feel neglected. You know, we can sort of, um, you know, compare it to a healthy relationship with a person, let's say. And so on our way to getting to this healthy relationship with food and really relearning So we have to move away from all the things we've been taught in society by our families and really look at food. What does food do for us? And the role food plays in the emotional eating um, pattern and the way I look at it and I help clients move through this is that we relearn a new way to nourish ourselves. And what that really means is that we are looking at food away from the diet sort of way we've looked at it. We're not restricting food. We're being more abundant with food. We're really focusing on digesting that food and that we are absorbing those nutrients or optimizing digestion. We are making sure food tastes good to us. It's delicious. It's not this just fuel that it is really um, giving to us in multiple ways. And we're also looking at when we are truly satisfied with our food, when are we triggered into that emotional eating? So we're really discerning that true hunger, physical hunger from that emotional hunger. And this is really important because food, we need to relearn this relationship so it's healthier, so we can see where we have the unhealthy relationship with food, where we are being triggered into emotional eating, where we are binging because we are not you know, we're sort of restricting ourselves. We're looking at food in this way. And it's not just about the food, but we need to create this foundation. So what I saw when I was going through my own journey was that everything was so separated. You know, I, and I don't think the practitioners I saw were specialized in emotional eating, but let's just say, if you go to someone that just focuses on 
therapy of the mind. They're not connected to the body and food. If you go to someone that is just about the food, they're not connecting in the emotions under the food and the body piece. And if you go to someone like a trainer who's just looking at your physical body, you know, they touch in a little bit on food. It's not interconnected. We're not seeing how all of these paths are overlapping and interplaying. And so with food itself, yes, we are learning to nourish ourselves. We're optimizing our digestion. We're seeing where we're binging and we're learning that emotional hunger. But we're also, the other connection is that our digestion holds this pivotal role. If we're not digesting well, and so that happens a lot with emotional eaters, or just in general, we're, we're so bombarded with nutritional noise. We might be eating in a way that is not, you know, it's not serving our digestion. It's not making us digest things well. It's impacting our digestion. And so when that happens, our gut, our digestive system is connected to our brain via the vagus nerve. And there is direct relationship with our gut and our mood. We actually produce a lot of neurotransmitters in our gut. So we start seeing how we need to look at the holistic picture of the way we're interacting with food. And so, you know, the two other areas that are important to touch upon are body acceptance. And so the rhythms and rituals that our body needs and the emotional wellness piece. But for today, I just wanted to focus in on the food piece of this emotional eating sort of puzzle, um, because we need all these pieces working together synergistically to really resolve it. So if we just do the food, we might get some results, but we won't get that sustainable change that we're really looking for. And so essentially what we do inside of my program, the Emotional Eating Evolution Program, so the first phase of the program is really focused on true nourishment and optimizing digestion and really looking at, you know, some of those physical patterns we have with food and relearning a new way to be with it. So we are discerning between true and emotional hunger. We are minimizing binging if we are restricting our foods and our calories. And then we move, you know, we're optimizing digestion, we're improving that trigger, that mood trigger. And then we move into the other phases, which are body acceptance and emotional wellness to really get that sustainable change because food doesn't hold all the pieces, it holds some of the pieces of the puzzle. So I just wanted to share that with you. If you have been trying just you know, the food part and not seeing results. There's so much more that is under the surface and nuances that we need to look at. And so if what I'm saying to you is resonating with you and you are looking for, um, you know, a way to move forward in your emotional eating journey, I would highly encourage you to check out the Emotional Eating Evolution program. Um, and you can see how all of these pieces are sort of laid out. And of course, if what I'm saying is resonating with you and you're ready and you're committed to move through your emotional eating and to resolve it so that you can finally feel confident in your body and around food i would love to invite you to book in an emotional eating assessment call i will leave a link below and if you have any questions about what i've shared today please be sure to leave them below please be sure to like and subscribe and i look forward to sharing more with you and i hope you have a great day